Hello everybody, Soybean Farmer here. Uh, I'm talking about soil compaction today. And that's an issue that you're going to fight when you do conventional tillage. What I'm looking at is a two-row ripper. Belongs to my cousin. Um, he has loaned it to me. And I'm going to use it this year. Now, tape measure to show... Basically, I was playing with this yesterday, and this was in the ground. I mean, I was running it all the way, so to get an idea there, looks like about 22 inches. 40-20 in third gear, had no trouble pulling it. Uh, probably could have pulled it in fourth gear. Now, <coughs> what I want to show you here is something very simple you can make one of these you need a piece of quarter inch uh, steel it needs to be quarter inch and it needs to be good steel so it doesn't flex and what I mean by that is when you take it and try to do that with it there's very little flex in it that will destroy your ability to perceive what you're sensing now we'll just do the first one right here in this area here this spot laid out last year was not farmed I couldn't get in it it was too wet and it's pretty wet right now um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and with a gentle steady pressure I'm just gonna press down and I'm going to sense what I'm feeling while I'm doing it so here goes and right there is where I met the resistance that stopped me. What I did was I just found the hard pan in this location. So stick a fingernail right there and pull it up. And that's how deep I can go before I hit compaction in this location. All right, I know from that offset disc down there that I'm, I want to keep that finger the same, I'm turning where I just put that finger that my thumb's touching right there. That's the depth of where I'm going with the offset. So actually the hard soil I'm breaking up about an inch. But that from there to there is soft and loose right now. So uh, in years past I've learned that if I didn't chisel and we didn't get regular and consistent rain, I had little short plants that didn't produce a lot. And this is a tool right here that I've dreamed about using and just, you know, it sat over there, leaned up against a post. It was missing some pieces. Uh, these right here, they're don't can't think of the word right now we just call them shoes they bolt on there's a bolt here and a bolt right here and you're going to wear them down so you don't dare run this thing without those you would mess up the piece down here but let me take you and show you a couple of spots where uh this tool is going to open the land up and we'll talk about something i discovered on these spots last year let's roll up there Okay, this is where I was playing with that uh, ripper subsoiler yesterday. And this is a little spot uh, right across here that I proved to myself last year the benefit of fertilizer. Now, from, you can see the little bit of beans right there. But from there to that corner and out to where you, this little section joins the main field, I put 125 pounds of fertilizer, 5-20-30. And now that was a lot of fertilizer, but uh, I did it to make the point. And for the first time, this area produced a lot of beans. Now the problem in this area, as you can see right there, the red clay, and right there i'm going to just go right over here and take this tool 
and do the little trick that I showed you. And we'll start down. And that's it. I just, let's, let's go another spot. Maybe I hit a rock. All right, we'll try right here. And that's it. That's firm resistance. So put my fingernail here and that's what I got. Now this ground's wet. We've had rain and rain and rain, but it's red clay. It's, it's compacted. You see how far I got in. Now, that right there is where I ripped and I had it at full depth. I had that bar on the ground like I was talking about. So let's just get over here in the middle of the rip. We'll go right here and take that and it practically, now it hit the bottom right there. That's where it hit. But it practically just fell in there. So even though the ground's puffed a little bit, I'm gonna put my thumb about right here. Now look, see that? That's the depth I want to get to. Now there's reasons I want to get this hard, compacted red clay soil opened up like that. Right now, it's February the 26th. Uh, let's see, let's go March, April, May. Probably gonna hold off planting until the end of May this year. Learned a big benefit last year about late planting. Don't wanna be as late as I was last year, but uh, last of May is going to be what I want to hit. Anyhow, that's roughly three months there that I'm going to catch rain and it's going down in the earth in this uh, cut right here. I'll show you again. That's where I cut it. That's where I cut it. This was not cut. Let's see what we get. Resistance right there. You can feel it. This is something you got to develop a feel for. Uh, but let's see what we got here. Right there, that's it. Now, last year, the reason this spot made so good, I had rain every every week, sometimes two or three times a week. Uh, and then that fertilizer I put in here. There's gonna be a lot of fertilizer in my program next year. <clears throat> now, this spot's interesting. You get over to about right here, and the, the red clay starts to change, and it gets into black soil all right the only thing i've done here is a little bit of vertical tillage to cut up the surface residue and this is the first time i've ever had any surface residue in this area because of the fertilizer and all the rain every year is different you're going to get something different every year but now that i'm out of that red clay area let's see what we get right here resistance firm resistance at that point right there There you go. That's it. So it started raining on me yesterday while I was up here playing, but I want to rip this like this. Now you're probably thinking, what good does it do to have a rip here and then go, I guess that's about three feet and have another one. A lot of good. That water can now get down in this earth and it will actually come together. The risk if we get a lot of rain and a lot of rain and a lot of rain, I'll have such uh, soft ground that uh, I risk getting stuck in here when I go to take a disc to it. But uh, you can see a little bit over here. It was pulling hard, but third gear it pulled it. And you can see a little bit of where the 4020 uh, rear tires, there wasn't any real spinning, but right in there is a little bit of... Uh, you can see it was working a little bit. But the whole farm don't need it. Uh, I'll walk over here because as you go more this way, it gets different. Still in the same field, but out here on this edge, let's go right here. Resistance. All right. See how deep I got that time. All right, now let's cross the meta strip and go right over in this field. And the further that way we go, the more sandy loam we get into. We're still in. All right, let's go right here. Resistance right there. 
All right, look at there. See? It varies. Soil types on this farm, it varies. Now I'm gonna show you something interesting. This meadow strip's been here for 30 plus years. No disc, no plow, nothing. Just me mowing it. Watch this. All right, there's the resistance point. Go to the ground, not a lot of difference. Not a lot of difference. Everybody wants to blame the plow for creating that hard pan and that compaction. But make yourself one of these. Uh, you can invent a name for it. I don't have a name for mine. Uh, hard pan locator. <laughs> Soil compaction tester. Uh, pokey meter. Anyhow, that's what I'm up to. Things I learned last year about fertilizer, yeah. Soil test results telling me about 300 pounds of 5-20-30 to the acre. I'm going to do it. Uh, I miss the lime. I hate it. It's too late now to get lime on the land. Lime needed to go out uh, early December to give it time to do what it does for beans. But the other things that I can do to make the best crop I can possibly make, I'm going to do them. Everybody, thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching my videos, and I hope everybody's having a good day.